and <laughs> and we are looking at a city bank tournament today as we did the uh, previous Oh, okay. So watching the code, uh, watching the code, getting that 
We'll, we'll just move to the PC sound today. This is... Oh, we, oh wait, 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 wait. I think I, I might know what's wrong. Okay, so the volume should be up, but the quality is going to be a bit less now. Uh, thanks, Angela, for noticing. Um, I'm a bit dissatisfied that they haven't started. It seems to be the problem with this tournament. If it's not an, an arena, they, they don't start their games quickly. So let's just uh, see if maybe... Who else? Let's see if King Colvin, maybe another one of the top seeds, is in the game to get paired or uh, to accept each other cha each other's challenges. Okay, so King Colvin's in the game. So this is round one. He's playing against uh, GM Giant Slayer. And I've missed some action, actually. I, I apologize. Five minutes has gone by without any chess. So uh, we have this typical scotch, but uh, Bishop C4 instead. And this is going to be a very tough game for King Colvin. A very sharp line incoming. And uh, I'm trying to remember what the... the the gambit's name is, but uh, I think it's possible here to for black somewhere to, to sacrifice a knight. Um, in any case, I saw this crazy gambit recently. But this seems quite natural and normal, nothing too special. Developing on both sides. But thank you, Angela. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm on without the proper mic at the moment. I don't know what's wrong. Hopefully I can figure it out for my next stream today. I'm going to be looking at the Western Cape. Uh, chess league as well they've got a big team tournament coming today um so this gm is mr i think he's playing for let's just quickly see his name uh, his name is girish kushik i'm not too sure who the guy is uh, it's obviously it's this guy it looks like uh well i'm obviously i've got his his uh, name in as well it's just Okay, he's an Indian Grandmaster. Okay. Well, that's loading. Let's go back to the game. And he, he's kind of taken over the initiative here. He's taken over the center with these two pawns, which I like quite a bit. Um, by advancing these two, you upsetting both the knight and the, the bishop. So, okay, knight h4, and now bishop to e4. He's taken over the diagonal as well. Um, if I were white, I'm going to be trying to get in the move f5, f6 very soon. Try and land here with my queen, because uh, this bishop is actually not too great. So I'm not sure why the queen needed to move here. Uh, this would have been a, an excellent move, I feel. Maybe one of the issues is uh, the knight somehow, but your knight is currently defended. So he's trying to play with tempo against the bishop to bring his queen in like this. But now it might feel like there's not, not much to do. Okay, there's a pin currently, so just queen falls back. And actually, King Colvin is doing a great job over here. Um, he just needs to figure out what to do with the knight. Is the knight trapped? Yeah, I think the knight is much trapped. He's losing a knight. After king goes here, you might need to... Defending was more active. But you still have to deal with c6 and bishop d8. So maybe just bishop here for now. And now you really need to play f5. So I'm, I'm seriously... Uh, 
I'm a fan of this f5 move, and actually I might even prefer white here. Uh, these bishops are great, uh, but king to the corner. I mean, even check. Oh, okay, we're, we're gonna have to see. It's gonna get pretty sharp now. We're gonna have, we're gonna have check king h1, uh, and capture isn't necessarily possible because of rook takes. So after king h1, what can black possibly do about the threat of capturing and going rook f7, which seems to be uh, game over? The GM might just be going down. King Common doing a fantastic job over here, and I'm glad we, we're watching this game. So the Wolf is in a game, and um, Adam Fawzi is in a game as well. We can jump over to them in a second. Okay, so this is this is very interesting. What what to do about f5? Okay, he's just going to defend his base point. Um, but as as white, I might just be considering going e6, and after this trade, then capturing here. One of the main points I want to make is that after king takes, you've got this beautiful discovery. You can throw your bishop back, or just keep it active and try and make this king. It feels it feels uh, pretty pretty done already. So definitely expecting white to convert this. Uh, the GM has gone for a scotch where it seems like he's going down now, and. Okay. King Colvin and the Giant Slayer. South African Wolf is in a game with Kit called Cairo. Again, doesn't look too interesting. Okay, so he wants Queens or very desperately. Uh, but Bishop F4. And what does Black do? The queen here? I th I'm expecting maybe even a, a peace sack. Uh, how, how good has King Colvin been playing this game, though? Or well, did the GM do anything weird? This seems like main line. Seems fine. Nothing too special. F3 might be the mark, and then F4 of something more special. But Knight's traded. Where did it start going so south for the GM? Knight F5. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was incorrect with pushing F5 immediately after Knight H4. Maybe this queen maneuver was uh, brilliant. In any case, so uh, F5 seems doesn't seem like anything too special happened, and yet it seems okay. So uh, if I were black, I'm going to just try and trade off my queen for white's queen, even if it's a piece. I might still have ideas of giving this check, uh, but white need not worry about this too much. I think uh, you can even make a fast pawn a long term idea. He goes king h1 just to step out of the check. And the nice thing is even this pawn is defended by the knight on h6. So you can never really move this pawn. That's why I was thinking about just capturing it so that you have this entrance into the position. So uh, h4 trying to get rid of the queen. But uh, queen g5. Just queen g4, apparently. Pawn takes. Uh, attack isn't too clear, right? So I think you can't go queen h5 because of this idea. You'd want to, so you can maybe just go knight takes. And uh, rook g8, queen check, mate. So rook g8 is never possible. So the grandma also just pushes, pushes the pawn beyond. He might be aiming for an idea where queen takes g5 is on the board, or rook g8, and after the knight takes, this rook can recapture, and then uh, Black's got this long-term idea against the g2 pawn to mate over there. I think the Grandmaster might just be warming up, but it feels like he's coming back somehow. This idea, just setting it up, is, is now a defensive resource. What's up, James? Are you playing today? Great move, I guess. I think if uh, you capture here, this is simply checkmate. So if you capture the knight, is there an idea of maneuvering the queen? Okay, so <laughs> the GM spots a way to simplify things and go for an endgame. That's all right, but I think rook takes and white's advantage is still very clear. That was not even necessary. Uh, don't, don't misplay this position now. Just go knight back and take the pawn on f4. Yeah, rook takes f4. And that's, oh, the guy doesn't play around. He 
careful now. Maybe just king e4. Just do, um, just, I don't know. You can just take the pawn as well. I just don't like having my king on the dark square. Uh, king e4 seems pretty cool. Just opening up the way for your rook to enter the position. Uh, there might be some mating ideas. Oh, shame, James. Uh, what year are you in school now? What is what is he maybe considering? Knight? I think there might be a... Just the square is open for the king, so I'm trying to see how to fill the hole. Okay, the, the GM is just throwing away some material. After captures, captures. Uh, oh, wait, the, the, the rook was... Was there maybe an in-betweener after rook takes? Can you take here? I think this could have been an in-betweener. Because if the rook falls back again to stop this mating after the queen idea, then simply bishop takes. A uh, bit crazy, but uh, maybe not necessary. Okay. But White should be converting this. Black has gone on the offensive. He's got the rook on the second, trying to make a pass pawn out of one of these babies. Um, grade 11. But uh, have you guys gone back to school yet? Or are you just busy with online classes? Okay, so king king takes f4 definitely on the board. Another rook check. Oh wait, there's a tactic. King takes and uh, bishop e3. Whoopsie daisy. You need to run your king to the other side of the board. Oh no! Wait, the GM doesn't even go for that. What's wrong with that? Oh, bishop bishop e3 just king f king f3, and it's white with the tactic. And now he's going to run his king to the other side of the board. This check and king there. White might just consider black might consider giving up the exchange. Who knows? I don't know. He shouldn't be going for a draw here. The GM's only got 28 seconds and there's no increment. So it wouldn't make too much sense if uh, that is his plan. So just another check. <laughs> oh, no. no, they're going for a draw. This was not King Colvin's best option. Oh, he's going for more. The GM didn't claim the draw. The position repeated itself, I think, enough times to claim a draw. But there was none of that. Was that enough for a draw? Uh, we had king e4 here. King e4 once. Twice. More online chess for you. I used to play a lot of a lot of online chess in, in the classroom. Um, I remember back in 2016 when I was playing Lee chess on my phone in most of my classes already. I think this, oh no, you can, why, why just, just going to push through the pawn, obviously, so black can't defend by taking the rook all the way back, it's hanging. But back then, uh, that's the story I wanted to tell. Uh, Lee chess only had, like, I remember when I went into a game for a pairing, uh, Lee chess only had about 40,000, no, 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 I'm lying, just like 30,000 players. Uh, now, but now with the lockdown, they, they hit new. Oh no, black is going to be playing for the win now. He's going to get rid of this pawn, and now this pawn is a big threat, and he's still got the bishop around. 12 seconds to go. This is where the action's at. Oh, sorry, but now Leeches, I think the other night I saw them have over 90,000 users online. That's when they started crashing and stuff, so but it's really great to see that. Uh, why not Why not the pawn? Okay. Nine seconds to go. King Colvin's going to try and flag this man, and to be honest, I think he, he deserves getting a flag, and he played such a wonderful game. Uh, the GM's going to... Eight seconds to go. This is going to be very hard. How to convert. You need... Yeah, minutes and 14. That's This is the strong positional chess paying off over here. Uh, White's not going to do anything too fancy. He's just going to wait around. GM just pre-moved. He's going to pre-move captures, so... Careful, White. You need to do something sneaky, like push... Just showing you guys how to flag people. <laughs> Six seconds. Uh, rook a3, maybe. He's trying to go after the piece. Black's definitely winning now. Oh no. No time on the clock. It's, it's probably just a draw. Black feels like he's got potential to play for the win. At most, uh, white can maybe just try and get the black rook off, but... Three, so this guy is playing very well on the clock. I wonder if he's got a different account as well that he plays uh, bullet on or something. Okay, the stat. Yes, this guy's at 20, 20. I mess with him when he's got two seconds on the clock. King Colvin has said, I'm messing with you. You've only got a pawn left. I'm going to try and mate you with uh, Rook and Knight, but I'm guessing it's going to end in a draw. The technique uh, is very tricky here. 
Um, not necessarily tricky in general. Oh, and that's a stalemate. What a game. King Colvin really bringing, bringing the heat in that game. Okay, for no chess, no life today. And I think his game is just done. Oh no, he's still he's still battling it out against kid called Cairo, but he's got one of these great. Um, what what happened for this material to get like this? Okay, so he closed the center pretty quickly, and then he got two knights for a rook. Okay, so he was he was kind of up the exchange in that sense with those two knights. It was like another material imbalance might have happened. Okay, no, just the smart way of trading down, and then he won another piece. So now he's got basically a queen for a rook. And this should be no issue for him to convert. He's still got seven minutes on the clock. He's probably just pre-moving everything. Uh, the game might already be over as I'm recapping it. Okay, he's sitting just up a mate. Is he going to try and mate with the, the miners or is he just going to push these pawns through? I don't think this game. But I think we know the result over here. So uh, nothing too intense. Um... Okay, so I followed uh, Adam Fawzi's game, I think. Uh, we looked at uh, this Girish Grandmaster right now, the previous game, but we, we also have Adam Fawzi in the house, a strong Egyptian Grandmaster. Are there any stalemate ideas? You need to get rid of this pawn, and then you can sack a rook, right? Somewhere. It's not that easy to sack a rook. Because uh, even sacking it can lead into just a simple checkmate like this. I think in Kid Called Cairo is looking at uh, ways to to sack something just to get a draw out of this game. Anyways. Yeah, so White resigns. I think No Chestnut no Life is going to be taking the lead with this uh, this first round. Um, in any case, I, I want to go through some of the games I think might be interesting as we wait for the next round. Uh, we have an IM, Kandil, Adam, also a very strong player. Uh, this Egyptian team looks very strong. So we're going to quickly go look at what happened in their first round. And uh, then also at what happened in No Chess, No Life's first round. Uh, as you can see, this team over here uh, with Keith Kamalu, Panelim, Shango Masia, and uh, Vusi Musi, Ma, 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 can't say his surname, Mashleki. <laughs> In any case, I played against Vusi uh, in one of the tournaments right before the lockdown. Very strong player. But we mo both missed that I was simply blundering a, a free piece in the, in the opening in a classical game. It was actually very absurd. He just trusted my my judgment. In any case, um, I was saying we're going to go search for this player now. I wonder if he's a family of Fawzi. They both got the same surname over there. Possibly, right? So it can be Adam. And he's played his rapid game. We'll give him a little follow over there. Also got decent uh, ratings, but obviously you can get the feeling that his brother is obviously, or family member, whoever Adam Fawzi is of him, is a stronger player. What did we have over here? Okay, we had an English and it, a very early D5. So, um, okay. And they were actually going through theory quite deeply. You can see the lines here. This seems like an opening, uh, seems to prefer black, the line the line chosen. I don't know which move it was or when black started to get, get like being the favorite. I think D3 is maybe the move that favors black. Maybe castling. I don't know if it gives you some extra time. Uh, possibility of playing. Looks like D5 might be possible, but committing to D3 has been giving uh, black good chances, and you can even see that Colson won a game with the black pieces in uh, 2014. Going off the weak pawn, when the game became novel after a3, okay. And the, wait, that's not just a piece. I, I like this f6 maneuver. The bishop sometimes has a lot of space to do what it wants to do after f6 has been played. It's got space to maneuver on the king side as well as the queen side. Covers the king and uh, also this f6 move, uh, as you can see, is restricting the knight. So, what was White's main plan here? I would have been looking for some kind of pawn break. Okay, this. 
f5 and suddenly black is shifting his gears towards the, the uh, king side nice outpost for that knight always going to be eyeing this pawn and uh, why not immediately queen takes peter's suggesting knight takes b5 what's wrong with queen takes i think just bishop g2 it says uh, black is relatively fine you can play f4 as well in any case maybe that's what he was avoiding f4 just immediately and huge spatial advantage and this is a great position that shows you how knights on nice outposts can steal a lot of space in a position and coordinate really well here's a tactic don't go queen takes because uh, there's this fork on the king and queen so just king f2 uh, wow okay and this should have been close to checkmate right six moves on checkmate over here king's trapped the two knights coordinated really well all white's pieces are kind of doing nothing on the first rank Great game uh, by Adam Fawzi, uh, relative maybe. I'm not sure what the relation is between these two. Okay, so I, I'm not. I'll keep. I'll keep this little banner open every now and again to see these guys are in games. But uh, from experience, doing this tournament a week ago, it won't be anytime soon. So we can go and. Okay. Uh, I know Chase wants to free that. That some of the strong players last week, but we we will be looking at some of Freddie F5's games as well. I think each board one at least uh, deserves to be featured, um, and we'll we'll have time to actually go through a lot of these things uh, very calmly. He's not online. He played his rapid game. Uh, let me just put this in the outlier, and okay. Now, Freddie had the black pieces over here, and okay, c6, uh, d5 is sometimes a plan, but he's going for some kind of perk, but now e5 immediately. That's that's a nice move to get in for black. You don't want to you don't want to get cramped in. So e5 makes sense. The queen's on c7. This is the main plan. This is a great square for your knight. Sometimes you go a5 and you fianchetto castles. Okay, white tactically lost the pawn over here. I think simply this bishop move loses a pawn, and there's not much to do. And he started trading down before recapturing the pawn because uh, getting to the end game quicker seems to make sense. Bishop c5 looked fine. In any case, we're going to just see him play in the star ways. He's now up a queen side pawn, which uh, can become a passed pawn. So he's probably, I think, his plan is to trade down. Uh, pieces and just push this guy. Okay, he's just coordinating on another pawn. He gets another trade in, which uh, White helps. What's up, Keith? Uh, we we checked your game. Yeah, that was quite crushing. I don't know. <laughs> but now they're trying to spell Patser over there. Can't even can't even spell Patser. That is like the the biggest way of spelling Patser, right? Any case, uh, I'm glad to see you guys are playing. I'm I'm rooting for no chess, no life myself. I am patriotic. I'm not going to be rooting for the Egyptian players, um, but I want I want some South African team to give you guys grief as well, not just the the GMs. Okay, so this was uh, uh, I think this is Freddie Widendal. He had a pretty pretty easy game. I think um, he was up the spawn and then trading down into the end game. Uh, the knight is not going to defend here easily, and there's just so much room for the king to invade. We've already got this one passed pawn. So yeah, that is that is basically what happened. And he just probably marched this pawn through. The advantage is pretty big. Uh, let's see what happened in Banelo's game since since he's online. He came up. But I, I think their first round was relatively easy. And... Yeah, he played against... I think he needed to have the white pieces. I think that's why they aborted their first game. And we have pretty much mainline stuff over here. And Masia is also checking out the game. Um, are they still playing? No. Okay. Black is Black is coming on pretty aggressive over here. I'm quite liking this style. This guy really brought it. Nonyongo is not a 1500. Not by any chance. This is wow. Maybe maybe these guys just play play on a different level when it comes to rapid. Well, that's unfortunate. 
uh, allowing this. Uh, I think I think Black would have held his own if just rookie eight, uh, but White was not even taking that. Interesting. Maybe just uh, this knight is actually super strong. I think that's Ponele's point. Walking into a fork, unfortunately. Um, as Black, what what could you try over here? I'm thinking black was still kind of okay over here. Uh, this isn't really good coordination. You don't want your rook babysitting a, a bishop over here. And even when you do something with this bishop, uh, the bishop needs to guard uh, this pawn. And still, this knight is on an excellent outpost. So walking into the fork was obviously not too great. Uh, the computer suggests going h6 and maybe tucking in your bishop uh, over there one day. Um, but it's tricky to, to be active in this position. As, as black, you don't have a lot of pawns to coordinate and do something within the center. And also potential f5 moves are now on our um, hampered. So let's see what uh, Masia, Masia got up to in his game. I'm thinking they, they, they took the uh, home, like a full score in this first round. Masia playing some strong blitz again. I'll need to take him down tomorrow night. Oh, oh yeah, he's playing some blitz while he's waiting for the next round, probably. But I saw, I saw him in the pairing, so I'm not sure if he's, if he's not playing. Um, is Masia simply not playing today? Have you guys got a different team or something? Was he playing on a different account for the Rapid Games? Uh, preserving rating on his on his other account. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's playing. Unless it's only the first two boards or something. I, I'm not too up to date with how uh, the organizers decided to to do this tournament. Okay, I'm not seeing Masia's game. Maybe he just didn't play yet. In this case, it might just be a long first round with a lot of waiting around. And Okay, so maybe let's... I'm not seeing Masia's game. We'll go check out uh, Mr. Dragon Wars game then. We're going through just a bunch of the top players. FM Dragon Wars. This, this guy looks like the real deal. <laughs> 2400... Uh, Rapid rating, that is pretty insane. And he played his rapid game and he got one point for winning it against the Royalty, 18, 1889. Okay. So this this very early uh, Bishop G5 is actually quite aggressive from from uh, White. Trying to just say that, okay, if you put the knight down, I'm immediately going to do something structural about your position. So that's just kicked away very easily. And a novelty... Knight c3. Uh, there must be something weird about the move, maybe. Okay, so I'm not seeing anything too special yet. Black playing for a decent center. Oh, and uh, maybe maybe f takes is a, a bad structural idea. You don't want to isolate this pawn, and you could have potentially opened up the rook uh, and not castled. I think the center might be closed uh, because of the pawn structure. So if you wanted to play more aggressively, that could have been a, an idea. But he said, no, I'll give me the structural damage at weak e pawn. I might castle and use the f file. Okay. And he blunders the piece, unfortunately. So I'm not I'm not too too sure about, about why. There was still a lot of time on the clock. He maybe just saw the move castled and uh, thought the bishop will sort itself out. But the bishop did not sort itself out. And even another tempo against the queen before recapturing. And now it means the rook probably just go in. Rook d1 check. I think the king escapes, so he's just uh, saying, okay, I'll go back for that file later, and this should have been game over. But still a few moves, okay. Okay, that was interesting. But the, I think the real bats is also still come, incoming. Let's see if the next uh, round is out. And Capablanca Chess Club's also playing. Uh, a chess Club. Let's just see where the members are. I can't always... I know the Capablanca is a, a huge, huge uh, chess tournament. You know, Jobo people play every year, the, the surrounding area. And Nigel Lynx, I'm not sure who this guy is. I've, I've heard the name before. I'm not too sure if I know who he is. Nigel52, he's online. And uh, 1800 feet air rating. Okay. Guessing this guy would uh, be a good rapid player. Oh, he played against Adam Fawzi. This, I haven't actually looked at Adam. I was looking forward to the game. Nigel is here himself. He is analyzing the game. Let's just uh, tell him if he wants some quick analysis. Uh, 
Wait, uh, I, I've got the wrong thing on the clipboard at the moment. I need to share the link to the, to the stream. Let's let's tell them to join us here if you want some analysis. Uh, game now. Let's see if we can we can. Wait, did I just? Oh, I I sent that as a note. <laughs> okay, oh, the spectator room. Oh no, okay, he's not going to see anything. I wait, I put it off. That's why. Send okay. Okay, let's see what happened. Simple Sicilian, classic Sicilian, and Nydorf. Um, trying to not going to anything uh, silly. Knight f5. Seems like Adam is playing some of his main line prep. And g takes. Very interesting choice. If this is a novelty, maybe uh, I would would recommend it if he if he had done some prep on it. There's obvious the obvious solution to the position. Uh, you simply recapture the queen and uh, nothing structural structurally weird has happened. So the g takes. Interesting. Um he wants the rook, rook to be uh, active, and he might claim that he wants to just keep his king in the center. Uh, but with this knight around, it might still be tricky. So maybe this is why b5. Rook first needs to move, and now he needs to start defending. A. Hey. Oh, the rook defends. Okay, this is pretty creative chess. King e7. This square is now covered by the knight. Okay, now don't don't, don't be silly and trade this knight <laughs> for the bishop. And the knight comes in and starts killing you. So just defend the pawn, and maybe he's looking for some other home for his king. So a very creative line, and he does a very uh, thin move. Sacrifice the rook that went to the c file for the knight on c3. Um, but I don't think it was completely necessary. Or the knight is actually contained at the moment. I would have maybe been looking for uh, some other spot to quickly defend this pawn a couple of times. Um, but in any case, so he gave some material to the grandmaster. And after the queen move, <laughs> Nigel, was was that move you played a? Uh, let's ask. I don't know if he's in the chat here. Um, let's just ask if a G takes F six was a novelty. I mean, something he prepped, not necessarily uh, a novelty, because it is a novelty. Because I'm trying to understand the idea behind this. This is a strong FIDE rated player coming up with GTX F6. So there's still a lot of time on the clock. So it felt like prep, but okay. Um, finding counterplay in this position is a very, very tricky. A uh, little tactic over here against the king, but the king just steps away and it's, it's sorted out. I'm trying to trap the bishop. But now you really need to ask yourself well, what is up with your dark squared bishop? Um, and these pawns, they, they're just they're killing it. You need to try and get it around or do something creative with it if you want to start playing. So now he... Actually, this bishop now has got a big responsibility of looking at the pawn as well. So uh, position just became gradually worse. Uh, Adam Fawzi didn't need to do too much. Just re-maneuvered his rooks and you can see the evaluation just continuing to go. Here's a mate in seven. Let's see if he found it. Starts with rook takes b6 check. I want to see this. Rook takes b6 check. Queen takes b6. And now rook b5. And this is actually, uh, well, after it takes, uh, the queen is coming in. This should be a main threat. Uh, so what to do here? You can try king a7, apparently. And after the rook takes, what? d5. Oh, d5 to stop any mating threats. Rook b7 check. What happens if king takes? Or just queen takes and this is still... Okay, so it's a mate in seven, but it's just the forcing. He found a different way to do it. Just double up, trade, and check. Mate. Wait, that's mate. The square's covered, I thought. Beautiful mate, actually. Uh, I think it's really just the opening move. If it, if it was something prepared, I don't know where it went wrong. I'm trying to see what the idea could be behind this uh, cheat takes. But actually... <laughs> it seems like it was refuted pretty quickly. Okay, so a lot of players are still um, waiting for a pairing, I 
guess uh, chess results I'm not seeing round two yet. So I guess they they're still reading in the in the games. Let's see who we haven't whose game we haven't checked out yet. Um, I'm I'm surprised my Sia's game isn't there. That's that's quite a surprise. I would have thought he his game would have been over by now. And. Yeah, I'm. What's up, Langfish? Let's. Uh, I'm. I'm thinking we should. We should look at a game from. From this team again. We wait. We did look at uh, Dragon Ball, but I'm trying to get the feel of the relative strength of Egyptian beasts, because already I can see that knights on table. They've got one GM, uh, but uh, for instance, this Hay Salmon family might be a bit underrated compared to the the, the Egyptian beasts. Actually, uh, Willem Heysalman is a student here in Poch as well, uh, first year in, in my chess club. I'm trying to make him a strong player. 2183. Okay, this is just the... Wait a minute. Okay, am I understanding this tournament incorrectly? Because it looks like all the top, the top two boards have played their games, but the bottom two haven't. So I don't know if it's only a tournament between the top two. In which case, uh, well, it changes quite a lot. So this is, maybe I should see if there's more board falls or things that haven't played a game. And did Vusi play a game? Vasky M. And Langfish, I, I haven't heard a lot about your tournament yet. Uh, I, I know it was supposed to be for like 6th or 7th of June. And have you just gone silent with the tournament? Uh, I know you were aiming for a thousand followers before before then, but uh, what, what happened, man? I see you are in the comment section. Or is it still going to happen just later now? In any case, uh, I don't know exactly what's what's up with this. Now, this is Vusi. His account. Uh, he's also not played a game yet, so I'm I'm not sure what to think about. Like I, I think I'm missing some information somewhere. A lot of the bottom two boards aren't playing, so it could be a tournament. Uh, just top three playing uh, in this tournament. We have we looked at uh, Freddy's game. We can look at uh, this woman Fide Monsters game from Chess One Two Three, and. She's online, so I'm thinking she has played a game. She played one rapid game. This account is a um, very quiet account. Not much has happened. This is the totality of what has happened on this account. Only only uh, seven games. And a game against Krotman, a rapid game. Krotman 20. I played a bunch of Blitz games against Krotman 20 yesterday. Uh, that was on, my different, on a different account, though. Go look at uh, South African ostrich. His games yesterday. I was close to adopting the guy. That's uh, Nelson Mandela University. I think an, an old student of theirs. He's got it in his profile. That's that's how I know. Um, so this woman Fide master with the black pieces took down Khrutman twenty. And, well, how did that happen? Because I must say this position seems pretty great for white. Um, this pawn is just so devastating. There's like a lot of air around the uh, the black king. Any case, I'm trying to see uh, the computer is suggesting it's already saying plus plus three, so it must be devastating. Oh, bishop d3. Very simple idea. Just go after the knight, and there aren't any squares for the knight to to run away to. So you're just threatening a clean knight, and the way to defend it is probably by going f5. And after f5 on passant, right? This is what the computer is saying. Uh, knight h takes f6, and then the idea is to go bishop d6, uh, which is over there with the bishop. So let me just show you. They're actually pretty... This is, this is how you should look at computer lines, I think, first in your head, and then... So uh, bishop here threatening the knight, and then f5, just uh, stopping communication, but after the ampersand, and uh, saving this knight. Uh, there's a, a threat of bishop d6, and this is beautiful, because uh, queen takes then simply check, and you, 
you win this exchange like that. Uh, two bishops for a queen. In any case, so queen moves, queen f7, and then uh, you win an exchange in this way. Either way, um, white would have been up the exchange, but very beautiful idea. Sometimes uh, the beautiful ideas are the things that keep the advantage, which makes it kind of unfortunate because you throw away the advantage very easily. You need to sometimes go deep and calculate in rapid games or blitz games. The advantage is because of a line. And if you didn't play the line, the advantage just fizzles away. Okay. Yeah. Apparently, black, black would have been fine for f5 now. It's all about the timing of uh, when this rook is open on the file. So now, after uh, rook, rook d8 uh, and knight e4, f5 is yet again not available anymore because of the bishop d6 idea. And this is actually exactly what happened. I didn't know that. Okay. Very interesting. So, lost the exchange. Whoa. Okay, so black was playing poorly. Whoa, okay, so just first, I guess, capture the knight. Wait, what's up with capturing the knight first? And often knight takes, yeah, this is fine. This is good. Okay. Yeah, uh, Justin Rishworth here from Online City Bank is making a good point. And for those in stream, obviously, uh, engine players piss me off. thing <laughs> is that the entire team will lose and be disqualified from the masters. I'm seeing King Colvin in the game again. I don't know if this means there's a pairing. That looks good. He's he's quite on it. In, in any case, I just want to show how Black won the game. Uh, there was this in-betweener move you needed to get and then won a piece, and I think it was pretty comfortable from there on. There might have still been a few moments, but I'm not... Uh, well, interesting. You've got a knight and a bishop for a rook, but uh, the opponents are pushing them through. Oh, I'm just simply picking up that rook. Okay, let's see what... Oh, King Colvin has left his game again. Wait, 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 wait a minute. No, he's he's in the game. So he seems to be the first player paired for the round, playing against yada da da, <laughs> yada da, not yada da da. In any case, um, not seeing uh, the round. Wait, he isn't out yet. I don't know how he knows who he's going going to play against, unless they've got the, the full. The full pairings out. I guess. I guess. I guess. Um. Okay, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Round two isn't out. But King Colvin, uh, he started a game here, but uh, I think uh, prematurely. In any case, that, that means we went through another analysis, and we've got some time for one more. This is a bit sad. It's like taking taking quite a while to get these pairings in. Uh, but I, I think how many rounds there would there be if you've got five teams? Probably, I think last time they said six rounds, so they, they, they're going to make it like a around Robin. And I've got more time at least today to stay and watch all of these games, but I've got a second and third stream as well today, so I don't want to tie myself out too much. I'll just keep... Yeah, in a mu, I'm guessing this is where Kretman is playing for. Oh, I have put my hand down on the stove. Okay. No pairings yet. Come on, guys. Does the wolf maybe want to play play a bullet game uh, to warm up there? So let's just challenge him quickly. See if he's awake. Let's let's give him some something to something to cry about over there. I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing this is just going to be murder. Ah, uh, he, he's scared. Okay, who else in his team might not be scared? <laughs> he's not scared at all. But I think there might be that odd chance. Then then that rating is. Is over. Okay. Uh, Masia is too soft for me, so I'm gonna. Yeah, these guys don't want to play games in between the rounds. In any case, uh, let me just. Peter's okay. Let's let's go through another analysis then uh, while we wait for that round. I think that... oh, there we go. Looks like the round is out. Okay, great. Round two is out. Finally, off. Taking about. 50 minutes to get a round through, but I think this is just round one. Usually, it's the thing with round ones. It takes quite a while to get the whole system going. In any case, um, round two is round two is live, so let's see. Round two, there we go. Board pairings, I think. This, this is where I want to be. Great stuff. I forgot <laughs> to go here in the previous round. 
Okay, no chest, no life, and the Egyptian beasts. This is the round we were waiting for. I'm going to open up every game in this round, and we're going to be following simply this team battle between these guys. Uh, we'll keep the Wolves TV up open. Uh, I'll open another little lead chest over here. Get another one. Another one, because we're going to be following these all four boards if they if they do manage to play. Okay, so the Wolf, uh, Banelovic, is on the second screen. Wait, that's probably why he didn't accept the challenge. Not that he's scared, he's, he's got a game to play now. Okay, let's watch Panella's game here. <laughs> what? Okay, in the spectator room, someone was saying, I'm starting this game on Droid Fish. I don't know why. Okay, maybe he just made it a study after the game. And uh, Masia, I'm not sure what's up with his games, but we'll... Guessing he's just going to get the pairing now, Masia 7. Oh, you know what that could be? I think in the first round, they were playing against a team with uh, not enough opponents for them. So uh, their players are online, so they just simply play for the game. And we've got Monsia's game up over here. And uh, the Tux Prodigy. And then we need only Vusi's game. And, uh, well, that's actually quite funny. I think I think Masia's the oldest in this team. These guys are all very young. They're going to be around in this country for a while, still chopping uh, until they're the best in the country, I don't think. Unless they emigrate, go find some stronger opponents. In any case, I don't know if he's going to be in the game, but uh, let's just see what happens. And we'll see why he's not playing again. I don't know what's up. I don't know if he's playing at all. I think uh, this time control would suit him more than uh, Blitz time control. We'll see how I think he's probably a bit better in longer time controls. Everyone's better quality-wise, but uh, some people are just damn fast. Yet again, this is just Bonelli's previous game. We're waiting for that pairing and chess results. Which other which other people are playing as well? Some. Knight and Tails, so a kid called Cairo just had a very difficult round the previous game. Played against the Wolf, and now he's going to play against the GM. The next round, he might just play against uh, another GM if he gets paired against... Uh, where's this other GM now? Wait! The GM disappeared. Oh, no, he's here. Oh, wait, no, he is playing against the uh, GM now, sorry. <laughs> and he played against the Wolf in the previous round. He's still going to get that... Third GM, Mr. Fawzi. That's why I was confused. The GMs are hanging out over here and here. Not down in one straight line. In any case. Okay, this is the big game, guys. This is this is the one we were waiting for. And um, the Wolf and Fawzi. Banele and the Fawzi's brother. We've got two twins playing against each other. We've got uh, Adam Fawzi and Kandil Adam. Wait, Adam Kandil and... I'm confused now. This is their surname, obviously. No. Banele and Shamu Keith Kamalu. Different, same names. They're both Adams. So these guys are twins, and we all know the Wolf and Banele are twins. So we've got the pair of twins playing on the first team versus Mr. Uh, Usa's... Let's winner, I think, how many years consecutively. And then this uh, mysterious pairing of Europe, which I'm not sure it will happen. Is this the same? Wait, this isn't the same guy. Maybe. Oh, so the No Chest No Life needs a player, actually. I don't know if they. And we're still waiting for the game. Should come any second now. Okay. And this game has started. I'm not sure if the Wolf. Wolf. This game is uh, taking long to start, but we have some action here with one of the Adams playing against Bonelle and very symmetrical, uh, quiet game. Uh, no action in the center of the board yet. Very hyper-modern, setting these bishops up. And uh, d4, immediately saying, I want something to happen in the center. Is there some tactical nuance here you can play? He's apparently not. I'm not liking the way Banele has played it so far. Uh, he's given up this great dark squared bishop of his. White still got this perfectly fine fianchetto system. 
And the Black King's already feeling kind of spacey with these pawns that have uh, already moved. The only piece in the center is the rook. But okay, let's see what happens. Oh, but Nelly's struggling there with his rapid rating. Mine is even higher than his. By no means am I a stronger player, though. Uh, these all happen because they don't ever play rapid. All of these provisional ratings. And then you, you lose a, a shitload of ratings when you when you do lose a game while your rating's provisional. Okay. Okay, the, the wolf isn't in the game yet. Uh, we're waiting for this game. Masia, he's play he's playing as well. Okay, great. It's great stuff. We're seeing a game of his. And he's playing with the white pieces, playing uh c3 against uh, the Sicilian the plans to go d4. I just have this uh, big center. It's different than playing an open Sicilian. Oh, okay, this this is just a point, maybe. Uh, he goes bishop e2 first, and castles. Uh, usually, I like just going d4 immediately. Uh, one of the ideas is that you want to play with this isolated uh, queen spawn. There a lot of theory on how to play with the isolated queen spawn, but the FM wants nothing of it. So he just stops uh, Masia's plan, and... Well, now it's not really possible to go for this idea anymore. I think you're just losing a pawn. Uh, no, you're just losing a pawn, but the foul might just uh, be a nice thing to play with, even knight e3. Uh, but one of, one other issue is maybe just e4 itself. But I might be fine with that. I'll go c4, d5. Okay, maybe this is still great for me. I'm thinking he's considering d4 at the moment. Definitely considering d4. If I needed to uh, make a guess. And uh, Vusi's also not in the game. This is just an old bullet game. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, the wolf is not getting paired. What is, what is up with this? Uh, Adam and the wolf, they, they're waiting. They want the other guy to send them the, the challenge first. They don't want to be the one to send it out. They want to show their dominance. So the, the challenge will never get sent out. Uh, they're just waiting around. To be alpha male. It's all about who sends sends out the challenge first. That's that's what it's about. Rook b8, and Vanella has kind of figured this out. I think uh, this feels like oh, this knight wasn't here. I remember saying how brought this a knight from b8 and put it on f6. Um, okay, you got it. The game looks uh, more normal now. He might even seven or. I might even consider bishop e6 with the hopes of getting this trade in and having a centralized pawn in an open f file. But the, my ideas aren't too deep, I think, here. This seems like a very, very dry, dryish position. Um, no one's committing yet to anything too, too deep. And uh, in Masia's game, what did happen was the move d4 and uh, trades. You've got knight c3, though. Uh, the queen is pinned. So knight c3 is a nice tempo move. The queen needs to go somewhere where it still defends the pawn. So uh, one of these three squares. Queen e5 looks bad. Okay, I, I don't know why I'm touching the oven the whole time. <laughs> I'm going to burn myself over here. Now, that, that would kind of make the news. No other chess streamer would be that extreme. Okay, so knight c3 is no longer an idea. Oh, here's, here's maybe an idea, right? No. <coughs> uh, it's pretty cold in this room. Okay, so I, I was thinking maybe knight c3 and after the captures... Wait, uh, something like knight takes in the center. You need another piece, though, to execute my plan. If you can get the, the queen uh, to be the last piece to capture... Uh, it could have been something like a mating idea without this bishop around. I'm trying to figure it out, uh, what the potential is of, of sacking here, maybe. What the queen takes. Without the bishop around, you, you always had that back, back rank. Double check and uh, some back rank ideas with the rook coming through. But I don't think there's anything here. Uh, Masia maybe was a bit too slow with rookie one. He looked like a good idea. In any case, uh, still no, no. Oh wait, the game has started. Adam and the wolf. This is the big pairing. This is the and okay. Playing some theory. 
uh, the bishop is about this is this is pretty pretty insane stuff h6 giving up the piece knight h5 wasn't knight h5 possible what am i missing bishop g5 oh but wait no i'm missing something here knight h5 is perfectly fine Oh my word, bishop g5, maybe uh, g4 doesn't work because of knight takes. Maybe the threat is just to move the knight back and then go g4, but even then you've got g6 throwing the knight back to g7. Okay, I'm going to have to go back to that moment. Giving up an entire piece is the grandmaster. Not afraid of the wolf. Never, never, never would I just give away a piece like that against the wolf. That is just mad. That is why he is the mad ham. <laughs> You know, that's actually not, a, that, his name is, so it's GM Adam, but uh, <laughs> I always read, I read it as the mad ham, because he's being quite a mad ham here. If you, uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Benella, I'm not sure if I like his position, but it doesn't seem like uh, the other Adam is doing anything too spectacular. He he put up this idea. I think uh, one of the problems with uh, G4 going for this idea in any case is just exposing your king and making an outburst there. So C6 stops that. And now you need to decide, oh, do you want to re recenter like this? He says, no, there might be a sack exchange. Oh, no, wait, no, the knight's there. Sorry, I forgot about the knight. I said so earlier. Now 95. You still got this idea in mind and your knight is pretty centered. So slowly but surely, Manele has improved his position. Um, it's nothing to write home to about the position. Uh, picking up a uh, pawn. Uh, this is also a huge square for white. Essential for the rook to enter via d6 and uh, rook d1. But I'm liking no chess, no life's chances in this round. Kandil Adam is an IM. And uh, struggling a bit here. How's it going with Masia's game against the FM? Okay, so we, we saw this very important d4 break. And rookie one. I was saying instead of rookie one earlier, knight c3 seemed like a, a good option. Any case, uh, the dragon just goes queenside. Queenside castles. He says there's nothing wrong with this. Wow. He might be right. So uh, Masia sets up this uh, tactic. Uh, that's just stopped. And now trying to remove some pieces on the side of the board. And oh, okay. Was any was this so necessary? I, I think not sure what I what the what the real threat is of the bishop f4. Um, but I guess bishop e2 is also just the move you don't want to make d6. So. You've got another option as well, just going knight d2 and being passive for a moment. But Masia is a bit aggressive here, maybe. And tries to get the queen active, but uh, he's, in fact, he's not losing the spawn. I think uh, bishop e4 is such a strong idea that would never allow this. So first the trade and the king moves. Now I'm guessing uh, yeah, the pawn's up for grabs. But I'm still liking Masia's chances here. Uh, Oh, no, great discovery. Oh, these FMs are tricky. They're like, no, there's nothing at the end of the attack. You know what? The position's going to be quite calm, and you've given me, like, I think two pawns already. So an open file with the bishop coordinating. This guy's not scared at all. He's saying he's got all the defensive moves. <laughs> he's got he's got in the material as well, so you could just might as well resign. Also, these, these ideas are, are in the house, I think. Be careful. If black does something quiet like this, it doesn't seem like he's doing much. He's actually setting up uh, queen takes. Well, not at the moment. I think uh, after rook takes, queen takes isn't possible because rook can take. But if bishop takes, queen is very alive on that on that square. Uh, don't be don't be surprised uh, to see black uh, giving away some oh material. Wait a minute. He's got d. Oh my word. This guy's strong. D two. What's the idea? And then the rook needs to move, and then he gets the bishop back, and his rook is still superior. What a way to trade down. Yo, I was considering that, that queen going to f2 sometime, but I never thought it would simplify the game so much. 
And there's not even the sneaky sneaky move because uh, just queen takes. Oh my word, this is this is just terrible for Masia. He's got two pawns, uh, three pawns, but do we even count this pawn? The side of here is just going to get nipped at. Even if you do manage to somehow win back this past pawn, which is going to be defended for a while, trust me, and black can just trade down, go for a king pawn endgame. Oh, this is this is looking like it's over. Uh, Vusi's not in the game. Uh, I'm not seeing anything over here. And uh, the wolf, we haven't been to the game in a while, and somehow Adam is now up a piece. What? White resigns. I missed all the action here. So the Egyptian team is taking down. The only game left is Banele's game, which seems like it might not be over when I come back after this analysis, but I'm not so sure anymore. Oh, okay. What happened in this game? Uh, when we were last year, uh, simply this knight got taken away from the game. But now we see the idea maybe... one maybe oh Fawzi's idea was just simply to attack down here and I don't know if there's a lot to do about that Can you maybe queen queen e2 after a g5 or something move uh, this pawn is hanging so after piece is hanging back again but he also didn't see the idea immediately he said he'll go back for it later like after d1 so it was a double blunder from both sides I think queen e2 would have just held on to the piece so the piece was given back, traded, and uh, and lost back again in this sense. So uh, this was an, a pawn that maybe the, you can't go knight takes because of the queen. Oh my word. Maybe moving the this as well. There's not much to do. It looks like the second piece might just be coming off of the board as well. Oh my word, just losing pieces. Trying to go for a fork over here. Saying that, wait a minute, <laughs> there's so many pieces hanging back here that I don't even need this rook. Oh my, he gives the rook away, he just doesn't want it. The check opens the discovery, so the queen the queen was defending this rook. So it's not about giving the rook away, sorry, it was a way to simplify the game. Playing up a full piece, white had had enough of your... When your opponent sacks a piece but manages to be up a piece in a few moves, that must just be terrible. No chess, no life seems to be going down against these Egyptian beasts. This game seems like a perspective, a perspectively good game. Uh, it's 10 plus 0. I'm liking Banele's chances uh, with his extremely high bullet rating. But then again, uh, his opponent is no um, stranger to bullet himself. Uh, still a very slow time control if you if you actually think about it they've still got two minutes to navigate this position each uh, but Nell is up on playing playing against the bishop but the knight seems to uh, be preferable in this position um, and now rook d2 seeming really good for him his opponent gives him another pawn there's no idea behind this right you can go uh, rook takes f2 and try and double up on on this file I'm not seeing any ideas with some kind of back rank or using the queen. So the, the pawn is taken. This seems like the only win uh, for, for the No Chess No Life team. And I'm thinking we're just going to close the Wuzi tab. Rook d2. And black is up two solid pawns, and they are quite healthy pawns. Uh, the other pawn of white is also pretty weak. This is a potential weakness. It's an isolated pawn. There aren't any other pawns around to defend it. And, okay. Threatening rook d2, that needs to be stopped. And now maybe knight d6 uh, with this idea. Bringing the knight in like this. Okay, he, he's going in a different direction. Keeping his ideas alive. And Banele, really the only prospective win here for his team. The wolf going down in such a such an odd way. Some um, tricky queen queen tactics and motifs going on over there in, uh, in Adam Fawzi's mind. But the wolf, uh, the, the the wolf's twin should have this game. Setting up a fork. Oh, he misses the fork. So this is going to be game over. 
Oh my, this is just terrible. Okay, we're gonna see rook d4 maybe. How did, wait, why did he not capture? Oh wait, okay, so there's a bit of an idea here to come in with check. I don't think you need to be too afraid of it. You could have traded down maybe. Knight here coordinates well with the queen. In any case, they're down to not too much time here. And now queen takes there. Leading to... We're pretty close to getting... Well, uh, knight... Okay, no, that, there was no mate yet. He wants more material before trading down, but I think it's time. Yep, it's time. And he just simply wants the queens off, knows his opponent's going to pre-move. Okay, so that's one win for no chess, no life. And it seems like only these top three boards are playing at the moment. So the Egyptian beasts take them down 2-1. Adam Fawzi and Sadek Sameh took down Sia and Keith. And which other games are still happening in this round? Let's try and see if we... Okay, Ol Ol Sukus is in the game. This is the Women Fide Master playing in uh, Justin Rishworth's team. And playing against Rolf Kutter. And this rating is just jumped from, from the position... Uh, well, provisional rating it was. And we have another Sicilian from her. We saw some weird some weird things in the previous game with a bit of luck maybe there in the black side with the in between and that managed to pick up the piece, uh, but this seems this seems like a, a more sound game if I can say so that there's more direction in what she's doing and the line isn't too too confusing. So H four. Oh, there's a piece. Thank you so much. <laughs> and. Uh, White's on the offensive, but black, even if G takes, I think you throw in this check and... Well, I think you need to be careful, actually. Your knight takes, maybe? Get rid of the weak piece. And after pawn takes... Well, pawn, you often, after knight takes, uh, white must recapture this rook first. So you can maybe consider doing something with this knight, uh, just putting it on D4. And the rook needs to run away, but uh, you don't even need to go for this this silly line I'm showing over here. Um, you can simply just, uh, after knight takes, you can recapture the rook. And white still needs to recapture this somehow. So then you've got this check maybe with tempo. Before, when the king moves, you can start running your king somewhere over here. There's no knight anymore. And I think that this is the kind of idea she's considering at the moment. Okay, bishop takes instead. So there's something else in mind. Because I was wondering, after pawn takes, uh, queen check, king uh, d1, there's still this huge attack on on the knight and uh, no clear defense. Uh, maybe the idea is knight g4. So this is maybe her idea. Check, uh, king d1, uh, knight g4. And uh, if the rooks are traded, you've, you've actually got some... Oh. Yeah, this is a tactical idea. But what's wrong with the rook takes? Maybe queen check, and then there's another check that I can give. Must be careful though. Um, okay. If this rook wasn't defended, white could have maybe stood a little bit better in the line. So after a rook takes, uh, queen check, uh, king there, this knight checks. If this knight was, uh, say, here, or over here, not defending the rook, uh, there was a possibility of white giving the queen away after the queen takes and then taking the rook. On a8. Uh, then it's two rooks and a bishop versus a knight and a queen. Oh my. This game is really getting exciting. Uh, rook takes must be played and now they serious threat. Okay. And it seems like uh, his, his first game was aborted. Maybe the opponent didn't pitch. And we have a scotch. Um, I like queen f6 over here for, for black. I'm not sure what d6 is about. Okay, so, okay. So this is what's so bad about d6. It's tripling your pawns and after the queen. Queens come off. Uh, this castle with tempos and, oh, these guys. These guys just look terrible. King takes. Oh, this guy is not hanging. 
and then the rook signing. Oh, that hurts. Okay, so Nyongo had enough. He played. He played very, very strangely against the Dutch, Ach, the um, Scotch, the Dutch and the Scotch, <laughs> all the nationalities, the English. Uh, well, I want to. <laughs> King's Indian. Name all the nationalities of the opening. So this game is still going on. I, I thought it would be over after after we reached this position or something like this. It's just a piece and so many pawns. Maybe this. That's not even an, an idea. The queen's hanging. Queen moves, and soon this this should be all she wrote. I'm. You know what? I'd even consider going knight c3 because there's uh, possibilities of. Queen takes and well, F takes. Um, maybe as an in-betweener or something, uh, the bishop still hangs with check. But now we're going for something different. The, the game, the game will be over soon. I don't know if anyone else is still playing uh, except uh, her. I'm not looking at too many of the other teams. King will move now, and this check uh, forces the king well to the corner, and then we'll see Rook takes H2. And the queen will be off of the board, and the game will be very simple. If king here, then knight here is much more devastating after the trade. And there's actually no good way for white to stop this check. It might just be a resigner on the spot. Um, but uh, in any case, the game uh, doesn't seem too interesting anymore. So we're kind of waiting again for the next round. I think this might be one of the last games. Uh, we'll see what uh, Bubulasha is up to. <laughs> Bubulasha, I don't know what, what the guy... Once, how how the, the name should be pronounced. What's the story with that? Let's see what's happening in this player's games. Okay, so played a rapid game against Gabriel Christie. This player we also looked at the previous Saturday. Oh, not sure if it does too much. It's a clever way of getting the knight to this square it wants to be, but uh, you could have done the same by going going this route. This comes with tempo, though, so... Uh... <laughs> okay, Bupalasha won this game, but it was opening up this file for ooh, some ideas. And now rook b3, right? And black is still holding on. Oh, we have we have a um, the game isn't symmetrical. I'm forgetting the word for uh, there's an imbalance <laughs> with the queen and bishop versus two rooks and bishop. Apparently, black stands the better of here. You're supposed to just stop uh, the pawn from moving forwards, and then there will be no coordination between the two white rooks on this uh, g pawn. And uh, white might actually be the one that needs to be careful about back ranks and retreat soon after something like queen a2, threatening all not kinds of nasty things on this b1 square. Uh, but after queen b5, I think d5 was played instantly, uh, kind of instantly. 10 seconds is, is close to instantly. And going for his own mate threat, just walked into a mate himself. Rook takes g7, mate. Boo boo, get, like, gave out a little boo boo over there. <laughs> Left his opponent for that one, and I couldn't resist the joke. This game is still going on. This is insane. Okay, so how did White save himself of your King G2? This is different than what I was looking at. I thought this King H1 is forced. I missed this move, but Black is just playing very comfortably. The same threat is on the board. Actually, this is mate in one. All these squares are being cut off of the King, and what to do? What to do here is White. Can't even sack a queen, that still be mate. Sack the queen here. I wonder if there's still a mate in one. Uh, there's a mate in two. Pawn takes. Oh, well, king h1 is the way to avoid the mate in two, right? <laughs> okay, so sacking the queen over here is your longest chance to survive, I guess. What will Rolf get to do? King h1 is maybe also an option. Rook takes, uh, queen takes, knight takes. Rook h1. Why am I missing rook? The, the best defenses. I'm obviously, I never need to defend. I'm such a such a strong player. I'm always attacking, so I don't even know how to defend. 
it's not even my my vocabulary. Freddy F5 is also done with his game. The the teammates are, are now uh, well. The Freddy F5 is in a different team. Excuse me. We have Rook A1, just defending that pawn, and I'm waiting for the final blow. Feels like you just need to give one more, one more nudge at this king, and it's like the having this huge Jenga tower, and it's balancing. I think this is the move. It's another piece, but it'll come back for more now. And, uh, you don't want to move this queen, I guess, ever. So after bishop takes... Wait, is this a possibility? Bishop takes... Uh, knight takes, right? And queen takes... Check. Queen can fall back. But then, then black's just trading into an endgame. So the tower isn't knocked over suddenly. It's just uh, taking away the pieces from the top. Is the uh, Alsukis Al or whatever <laughs> how to pronounce that username? I don't know, but I didn't decide to top over the towers. Just uh, dismantling, dismantling it, going into an end game, up so many uh, pieces. Uh, this is fine. Go for the queen trade. Uh, just nudge this knight on d3. Like, oh wait, going for more. It's still going for the tower. Still going for that tower, but I, I don't buy it. Oh wait, maybe king g2, knight check. King g1. This player is surviving. Uh, I thought the, the tower is just going to be dismantled from the top. But it, it seems like they're still looking for that knockout blow. Looking for that knockout blow. Okay, white resigns after this queen check. Am I missing something? Uh, okay, I'm... I was being very uh, dramatic there with the knockout blow, but I it's because I didn't feel like the, that was the knockout blow yet. I know I know this is bad, but uh, what about king here? Knight e3. Okay, but okay, I was looking at this check saying there might not be too much. Queen takes e2. This is this is a nice way of getting the mate. In. Okay, maybe this was just the knockout blow. But I, I maybe might have tried to play on as white, uh, gone for this end game, uh, just to make a point that I'm not going to get just crushed by your by your mating ideas. Yeah, the best you could do is just to simplify and go for an end game. Uh, you couldn't find a proper mate on the board. In any case, um, the computer is saying uh, this is this is kind of hard to find. But I'm looking at uh, King B1 instead, just holding onto the rook. If I had to play this myself, and now after King C1, uh, I don't know what uh, white would have. Black would have done here. I was thinking maybe trying to continue the attack. Um, yeah, but knight e2 seems seems fine. Maybe black would have just played this now, going for something a lot more easy, or, or a clear way to go for even more material than was available a few moves ago. Um, these two ideas. Not much to do about them, and uh, you can't. I don't think you can put your king here, right? Wow, the computer suggesting rook h8 because the rook is now trapped. But I would have liked to see these moves made by black. I don't know if I would have just resigned. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a, it's a change in or difference in styles, I guess. To, to resign or not to resign is one of the ancient, ancient chess questions. Thinks someone should write a book about it, and we haven't seen Freddy's game from this round. Which I'm pretty played against Akme chess. And well, what's Freddy going for? He he's playing a well d4 nowadays, and there was a novelty in this position. Apparently, e4 is perfectly fine here. I wonder what's the computer's verdict? Knight takes e4. What's the idea? What's the great idea of knight g5? Giving away a pawn to bishop d5. Check. I don't see the compensation. The computer wanted to go e4 immediately. Uh, I'm guessing I would have done what uh, uh, Freddy Urendal did. I'm get this is Freddy Urendal, right? Uh, Freddy f5. Uh, we'll just go on queen c2 to prepare the move. And...
Uh, usually you try and set up something like this and try and knock this knight away. A queen in front of the bishop is usually a lot stronger than a queen behind the bishop in these types of attacks. Because it can deliver checkmate. Uh, but now bishop a6 is, is also an annoying move. Knight c4. Aiming for this square. Uh, okay. He could have maybe captured. Uh, the computer likes knight f5 over here. So if you're wondering what was the idea of so the way to get your knight to the f5 square, if you can remember it. So this knight came from the b1 square. So one of the ways is to get to the e3 square and then go knight f5. That would have been a strong idea, apparently. Any guess. Um, knight takes e4. Okay, so he drops the pawn. But, uh, clearly doesn't pick up that the, the pawn was hanging. And black has got a nice position here. After the position closed up, these knights became pretty awkward. So I'm trying to see where Ahmed Chess really went wrong. Uh, a lot of re-maneuvering. I think uh, stronger players sometimes pick up on, on the exact moment when to do what. So apparently now in this position, it was time to go knight 6 to h7 so that you can go f6 and f5 and uh, play with these ideas. In any case, uh, so the wasting around didn't achieve anything concretely with uh, pawn breaks. But uh, Akhmed Chess still has a fine position, so deciding to trade like this is just bringing the queen to the game. Why not queen takes e3? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of time on the clock. I don't know why queen takes e3 wasn't played. Uh, I don't know what black is really doing about that. He need, apparently he needs to go king h8, walk into the check. So this is what the computer is saying. And... Uh, White shouldn't have too much here after knight h7, but still got g4 ideas. In any case, um, he had a different uh, pawn break, I guess, in mind. Just saying that uh, he doesn't even need his queen to enter immediately. He'll prepare the g4 break in a different way. Just close down the queen side first. Play very safe chess. Just wait around. Go for f. This f break. Opens this line for the rook, and now I'm really liking white a lot. Brings the queen back, picks up this pawn now. Sometimes pawns are hanging on the other side of the board. And now two past pawns, and they're connected. So I'm guessing they were just pushed, and pushed again, pushed again, and not much to do. You're losing material now. Okay, so black threw in the towel. Do we have the next round coming in? Not yet, guys. As I was saying, well... I think we waited about 50 minutes before the previous round started. Or one round takes about 50 minutes. So it should start around now, I guess. Round two should be over. And we only still have round two, the, the pairings for round two on the board. Okay. Um, who else haven't we looked at? We, we, were, we were spectating the No Chess No Life team. And they went down against the Egyptian beasts uh, this time. Okay. The wolf is playing a game. Is he paired or is he just playing a fun game? He's playing some chess 916. Chess 960. I think I will only be spectating one more round. Uh, the biggest round I really want to spectate is uh, is already done. Uh, but I guess, like if you if you do the maths, it's about it should only be about twenty to thirty minutes around. So playing six rounds should only take, uh, I guess, <laughs> can't do maths, guys. About three hours, right? Um, so three hours max, but this is this event is going to take a lot longer. Until the event becomes a lot shorter, I, I think I'll only be spectating like 
the first uh, two, three hours of the event. So maybe we can stay for one more pairing, one more game. I'll, I think we'll, we'll just quickly go and look at well, the, the biggest players are kind of done already there around. I think we should feature some of the other teams we haven't looked at. So King Calvin is a player we've been looking at. Uh, they have any South Park aesthetics to the game. Who's the MC? They should have actually this after South Park characters. That would have been that would have been a cool idea. Okay, so played a rapid game today, probably in the first round, also against Akmechess. And Akmechess had the, the better side of this game. And that's cools the MC, the board one for the South Park team. And here, just as I was, as I was complaining that I want to get a third game in, the bearings are being sent. Okay. So it'll be a second or two before the round starts. We have a rook d4. Just going off to that pawn, centralizing this rook d pretty cool. But now it walks into a queen trades. And the black is to be preferred here. And I'm feeling pretty sorry for... Wait, no, wait, no. This is a game Akmed Chess managed to have the upper hand. Uh, this was a bad idea. <laughs> F3. Walks into a fork, and now you're playing down material. Losing the pawn here, and the pawn structure is still pretty healthy. You can do a lot with it. Black is just... Uh, he needs, still just needs to activate this one piece. And uh, he could have maybe gone rook, rook b3. Oh, this pawn is also hanging, obviously. In any case, uh, Ahmed Chess managed to convert this uh, rook versus knight endgame. And uh, don't think he had too much trouble. Picked up a pawn first, just kept the king on the second rank. This is why the rook is so powerful. As you can notice, the knight doesn't do half as good a job as containing the king in this type of endgame. This check was all she wrote because it's hanging the rook as well. And okay, the, the draws are out, so let's go take a, take a look. Uh, Mr. Keith is still finishing up his uh, chess 960 game. I guess he's he's not willing to play any rated uh, bullet or blitz games at the moment. Uh, so he's rating the sky high. It's about 2600. Okay, let's see uh, what the, the new that's what we wanted to do. <laughs> round three is out. And uh, I think this is the final round I'm spectating. Oh, this is a pairing I really want to see. Adam Fawzi versus Freddie Woodendahl. And uh, not sure about the, the Nelson Mandela University players, uh, how strong this uh, team will fare against No Chess No Life. No Chess No Life really bringing out their big guns in terms of uh, the team. In any case, um, I guess this will still be an interesting game. Khrutman uh, Lishle Maila. Guy I nearly adopted yesterday, and a man without a van, Shatakana Smela. Always wondered what the names are behind some of these accounts. So we'll be looking at uh, Freddy F5 versus Adam Fawzi, and uh, Keith's game, I guess, is also a big game for this round. Um, possibly, I'm, I'm trying to see where the other good matchups will be. Obviously, we, we have Nigel F5, R52 as well. But these see, look like the, the big games. Uh, Mr. GM has been having all right pairings. Ahmed Chess, unfortunately, now, after the previous loss, uh, also got a difficult pairing against the Mr. Girish, Girish uh, Koshik. So, not Anish Giri. <laughs> that would have been maybe even more scary. So, let's, let's jump into. Uh, I think I'm already on it. And then we're going to look at Freddy F5 as well, what he's up to. He's playing against Adam Fawzi. And have they started? Yep, they have started. Okay, great stuff, great stuff. Okay, so I have a Karu Khan. And uh, very, very typical is just to trade off. Uh, in this way, I just have have the doubled pawns, but a good bishop activity and a file for your rook to work with immediately. So, Freddy's still doing okay. If um, I'm trying to remember which player it is, oh no, this is actually the wolf. He he 
just put, puts this uh, bishop on uh, g6 without, without too much thought. And uh, if you want to capture it, it's fine. He likes this uh, block square structure. And Adam is fine with giving him this uh, square. It's kind of beautiful in a sense. It's a compilation of both the E and pawns. Uh, chilling it out in front of the F and G pawns. And now they're F and G pawns themselves. I quite like it. In any case, fun if you're a GM like Adam and how to play with it. Um, so, okay, expanding it in the first place seems like an idea. Uh, taking the central square pawn over here, because uh, the pawn, uh, well, it, it provides an attack on um, E4 square. Well, it would not be doing too much on F6. Unfortunately, now you need to spend a few moves to get this bishop away. It's actually pretty awkward. What to do with the rook? You need to throw it back. You can't go f6. You'd love to do that, but the king is in a pin at the moment. So this is really a moment he shouldn't play too fancifully. Um, if he's thinking about giving up the exchange, it's not a good idea. Sometimes you need to recognize, okay, your, your opponent's a grandmaster. Uh, he's managed to get this extra tempo and where I need to do something defensively now. And I'll get back to it later. Uh, there's no concrete way of just starting a huge attack immediately. Okay, now while I was discussing over there, let's see uh, Mr. Bubulasha is in the game against Dragon D. Keith's game for this round. He's not paired yet, so uh, let's just see what uh, Nigel52 is playing against Keith called Cairo. I think in terms of uh, strength, they are probably the best matched for the round. So let's see what happens. Okay. Pretty F5. Um, some. Okay. Wolf uh, has gone for 1D4, as he always does. And, oh, those are pecker nuts, if you guys are wondering. There's a big pecker nut tree in the back garden. <laughs> Not something... It's okay, so this is a very aggressive, like, pawn sacrifice of black, and it's only recaptured now. And um, F4, stealing a lot of space here in the center. Uh, maybe weakening the king, potentially, on this uh, diagonal. But uh, white is saying that, okay, really, if you want to come at me, then... Uh, I'll have these central pawns. So black, if I were black, I'd be very patient about what to do with this knight here. I would not be the first one to recapture it. Any case, so this is where this game is at. We'll come back to it in a second. Kid called Cairo and Nigel, they're playing a very slow game. Or oh, Nigel 52 is taking his time here. I wonder how much time he had before that move. In any case, what a beautiful find. And this is why this guy is a GM. He's not picking up the queen. Freddy's going to throw in the towel now. Not much to do. After after the sack, uh, this check forces the king here. If knight e6, the queen simply takes away the knight, and your position might just be even worse. Freddy's saying he's he's going to go for um, rook takes so that he can hold on to some material now. Maybe he's got this check tactic in mind, but uh, there is a huge material imbalance over here. A knight and a the bishop versus a queen and extra pawn for white. And uh, it was a pretty quiet position I was saying just now. Uh, be careful, don't go king d8. So checkmate. This game is already over, right? <laughs> Ooh, Lasha and Dragon War. Dragon War just... I don't, I'm not even going to go too deep into this. Okay, that's the uh, checkmate coming. Not much to do. Um, okay, that, that game's over. Kid called Caro and Nigel 52. Nigel 52 has picked up the pace. I'm not sure what uh, he remembered. He in, in reply, he also went e5 or 5. And he's looking to do kind of the same thing as white. So going to be a long, interesting game there. Positional struggle. What happened here? Did black find it? That's what I was saying I would not be doing if I were black. F5, F6, this pawn just came rolling off the board. H6 is game over. 
Oh, well, at least it's looking for a queen stack on this square to defend the position. But uh, it's game over. Be careful, don't. You don't want to see queen h6 on the board. And as, uh, well, maybe maybe um, white can't consider, consider this line. I think uh, if bishop takes a d5, queen h6, threatening this mate in one. And after knight e6, which seems to cover the square, then simply c takes. This threat might even be bigger than I was thinking earlier on. Um, there might be some prospect of uh, picking up this bishop, maybe, after the queen sack on the square. So, queen d2, this is a stunning position. So, looking to give up the knight now, but I'd go queen h6 in any case. If knight trades, knight takes, and it walks into mate on h7. Not much to do, the wolf has got this one. And I'm expecting game over now. Which games aren't we looking at at the moment? Grootman 20 and Banelovic. I was saying this one is going to be a tough game for the Grootman. Uh, but so far, the position seems pretty quiet. And really don't want to give Banelovic any tempos to start playing with. Very symmetrical position. Maybe this knight is slightly stronger than the other knight. Um, wow, going to the E4 square. Great find. And now saying, okay, you ruined my pawn structure, but I... I don't want to see this knight here anymore. How is Banela going to recapture it? Masia is also in the game against KB1. And he's going for, for a lot of these same um, ideas as earlier in the Sicilian, going C3 in the Sicilian uh, to play for the center very quickly. And my, he's finding, he's found a beautiful line over here, starting with uh, knight takes. Check. So you need to respond to the check. And uh, after knight takes, he's up a pawn and he's picking up an exchange. So, uh, well, no chess, no life is taking away all the life of uh, their opponents in this game. And this game uh, is a resigner after knight takes. So we did see queen h6 here and knight takes and knight takes. And now you need to give up your queen or you need to walk into mate in one. So just the black resigned after simply queen uh, e7. And not sure, maybe you could continue playing, but I think the problem is the knight's hanging. And if knight e7, simply queen e6 is checkmate. So that's not a possibility. Now I'll also defend the knight. Um, bringing the knight in is also not an option, as I was saying. That's mate. So you really need to go king d5 if you're trying to hold on to material. And <laughs> that just doesn't seem like we want to make. Maybe it works. Um, but rook d1. Let's go to the analysis board. Let me show you guys uh, these things. Maybe I should keep this uh, until all the games are done. So we'll come back to it in a second. Um, let's just see who's still playing. Masia and KB, but he's going to win the game. Khretman. Uh, okay, so what happened here is he decided to take like this, and he wanted to be the one to hold on to the knight. So this game is still kind of slow. We'll, we'll be back, uh, back here in a second. I just got an interesting line I'd like to show. Kid called Cairo, Nigel 52 is also the other game uh, we want to be looking at. In any case, this is the line, Queen, Knight e7, this is checkmate. So uh, King here is actually the interesting move because now the bishop defends. So um, I was uh, wondering what is the story behind this move. So I was thinking uh, maybe Rook d1 check. And as the computer is showing me, it is a mate in 7. King here and now Queen h4. Wait a minute. Oh, there's a better defense. You need to go Bishop d4. Uh, but that seems bad. So... Queen h4 check, and uh, I guess whatever you play, you can't play anything. Uh, there's a queen takes b4 checkmate. So you need to give up the bishop here after this check, which is pretty insane. So rook takes d4, king c5, and uh, well, queen e5 check. And there should be a mate here soon, rook b4 check. King c6, avoiding queen b6 checkmate. And what? Didn't we just have this position? Oh, wait. Oh, you want the rook on c4. That's the thing. You're moving the king towards the side. So, uh, and now queen takes e 7 check. Uh, it's actually still quite a far away, like, while from checkmate, but... Um, <laughs> this king surviving. Any guys, there's, there's no surviving the position. That is the end point. Such a strong move. Queen... Queen e8, not holding on to this knight. Great stuff, great stuff. I enjoyed that game. So let's get back to, uh, well, let's first look at what happened here in Nigel 52's game because 
It seems like after going for this type of Maroxi bind, both players managed to trade off their knights on both d5 and e4. So they've got both got something like this happening, but black seems a bit better. If I can manage to put his bishop here, it's a very symmetrical position. So, okay, the game is still very equal. Black seems active because he's got the c-file, but uh, I, think, I think something like a queen trades. And uh, rook coming here. Okay, there's still a while to go. Bishop h3. There's still some things to happen here. But Nigel is allowing himself to get into a bit of time trouble. I would have been avoiding the time trouble altogether, maybe. But okay. <laughs> Khulet 120. This is the game. This is also the other game we were looking at uh, for this round. Rook a2 check. And... White offers draw here. Black's not going to take the draw. He wants his team to win very far. And one of his ideas is to and really crush this king here in, in this little bit of space he has. White uh, one's no longer available and now things start, start seeming very bad for, for White. Uh, there's maybe a line even where, well, Bishop here, or let's say he trades to fix, fix his pawn structure and uh, Bishop h3 after that. He might need to go bishop h3 immediately. Yeah, bishop. But if he if he does trade, he's he's helping white. Okay, he's helping. Yeah, he's helping black. So he trades and helps black. And now the line I'm scared of is this check, and if king up, the knight coming here. Even if this check comes. So. And then there's only one square left of the king. It seems very close to mating. Uh, but now that he's taking his time, he's saying, okay, well, this attack is coming. I don't need to go for this idea yet. I'm just going to go for a pawn. And uh, if my rook gets behind your pawn, there's no defending your pawn from the side. A very calm idea, just, uh, well, using his advantage for the time being, not uh, doing anything too aggressive. Just uh, his advantage is going nowhere with moves like that. And he's just feeding it. And uh, Grootman doesn't know what to do here. He's just... Uh, Walking away. <laughs> okay. Give the check now. Give this check. No, but the king is trying to slip away. He sees that he's got a concrete idea here. I think rook check now. He wants to go for the end game where it's only not too many. Oh, he's going to go for the extra pawn yet again. There's, if there's a pawn, he's going to go grab it. He needs to consider the worth of his f5 pawn though. Okay, so they, they're taking quite a while here to navigate through this position. I would have thought it would be over soon for, uh, for White. And who else haven't we been looking at during this round? Let's uh, analyze this position. Let's see what, uh, I don't know if Justin City Bang is in the game. What's up over there? He played three rapid games. It seems like he's done for this round as well. He played against Ralf Gutter. And... Uh, English. Oh, that's fancy. But apparently this is terrible for him. Maybe he played it with enough confidence. So the idea is e takes d5, and uh, I was thinking his idea is to go queen takes d5, right? So what's so bad here is bishop p4 check. Okay, and if bishop d2, trade. After the trade, uh, knight e7. Hello? <laughs> And donkey. The queen can come in now, so that is that is an issue. So the line seems aggressive for him, but the queen is suddenly very active. I'm not buying it. Ninety seven, just giving up the rook. Oh, but queen takes d4 check. You don't want to leave the post. Oh my word. Okay, so not a good line Justin Justin went for over there. Okay, this seemed like it got very sharp. <laughs> this is a crazy game. And how did Justin win this? This check and castles. Time out, he just flagged the guy here. Very, very cold. In any case, are all the games done for the round? Uh, what happened here? Kid, Kid Nigel, unfortunately, he got flagged. Uh, 
also this queen incoming. So I was saying I'm I'm actually liking White's position after. Oh well, he did do the queen trades I was suggesting, and then after the rook came in and bishop h3, all of these ideas happened. The pawn simply marched through, and there was space for the king to escape to. Okay, so I think this is this is the end of all of all of the games for the round. Masia's in the game. Oh, but he was playing against KB1, and he was up some material. So uh, he's going for even more here, it seems. Well, this is getting pretty sharp, but uh, okay, let's let's finish this game, and then I think uh, for the games for today uh, of this tournament, I think I'm I'm done for the City Bank tournament. As I was saying, if they if they manage to get in more rounds during the stream, then <laughs> then obviously I'd. I try and stream the whole event, but it's I've got two other streams still going on today, and this is a fun event. But I um, can't spend uh, more than six hours streaming a day. I think I'm going to kill myself. In any case, so Masias, uh, my thought was Masias getting the game, and it seems like he found the move here. Um, oh, this is very interesting though. The the tactic over here, so king to the center. Conquer king takes was of a rook. Rook takes f7 check, and uh, black is still losing most of these lines. So after winning the exchange earlier, but now it's really just well. Every time I think it's game over, there's another little tactic, but 10 seconds to go and I'm not buying it for, I'm not buying it for black. Uh, this looks devastating. And now just E7 hitting this uh, back here as well. And that should be the end of it. Yeah, and this piece is pinned. Time out. And okay, well, great stuff. Um, yeah, Angela, I'm streaming again today. Uh, well, only at... I think I'm starting just before three. It's a big Western Cape uh, chess tournament. Um, I'm just taking a break till then. This is uh, City Bank people wanted me to stream this event as well. So I'm, I'm not going to stream the whole event because uh, they're still playing. You guys can go look at the games. The pairings will still be coming out on uh, chess results. Um, but uh, well, we can. We, I think we should finish it after round two's ranking cross table. Uh, we can see the Egyptian beasts should be taking over soon, but I know Chestnut Life took a hit against uh, well the Egyptian beasts, but I'm expecting them uh, and the Egyptian beasts to be the teams that are dominating over here um, after the next three rounds. So uh, if you want to still watch, the action is still happening. Uh, it's just a bit too long for me to stream the whole thing. Um, but I'll see you guys again at 3 o'clock for a huge Western Cape chess tournament, and I'm, I'm looking very forward to it. So yeah, until then, and uh, thank you guys for watching, and um, yeah, remember to subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't done so, and then you won't. Cool guys, thanks for watching.